Well, today what I'm going to be doing is recovering this Harry Potter book into a more fun cover. I'm going to keep this cover on because this is going to act as my pages to hold the cover on with. I've got a piece of cardboard here, some paper to cover it with, my rulers, my bone folders and some white glue. So before I start, I need to work out what size these covers are going to be. And that's really easy. So first of all, I need to measure the width of the book. And I will need two pieces of card like this. Now I'm going to measure in about four millimetres into here. And that's going to be allowing for the spine. And then from here, from that mark there, here is 12 and a half centimetres. And I'm going to add three centimetres to that to add that over. And the height is fairly easy. So I measure the height like this and then all I do is again add three millimetres to the top and three millimetres to the bottom. I just use a normal blade to cut this out. I don't try and cut it in the first go. I always go through it a couple of times first and then I can pop that on there leaving a gap all the way around here for me to be able to even that up. Well I've cut out a mirror shape here and that's going to go on the front of the book and all I did was drew a rough mirror shape cut it out with a knife and now all I'm going to just smooth off those edges a little bit using these and these are sandpaper on sticks I think they're actually designed for nails I'm just going to go around smooth all these edges over and roll them over a little bit. It's probably overkill, but I don't mind. I want to give it that sort of a look. And I'm quite happy with that now. And what I'm going to add that to is a backing. So I can glue that on there and leave that to dry for about 20 minutes. I also want some bricks to put around the actual corners of the book. And I'm going to cut those bricks out individually out of this cardboard. Well, my bricks are all cut out, so I need to put them in a little pot out the way so I don't lose them. And this is lovely and dry now. So what I need to do now is cut around this carefully. And now I've finished cutting out the mirror. All I've got to do is give that a quick coating of some paint and I'm going to use a mix of burnt umber and a little bit of red but before I do that what I'm going to do is just put some kind of like wooden marks in this whether they'll stand out at the end who knows I know they're there and all I'm using to do this with is a bald stylus I'm also going around making sure I get all the edges as well yeah they are shining up a little bit I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up and we'll let that dry and now that's dry, I'm going to give it a quick dry brush with some black, very lightly. And then the same with a little bit of burnt umber over the top of that. And then I'm going to take a very fine brush, like this one, and just run some lines through it. And there we go. That's it. That's now that finished, apart from putting the mirror in. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. I think that's come out really, really well so far. And now that's dry, I'm going to give it a quick coat of satin varnish because I want it to actually shine, but not be really gloss shiny. And this will help as well to bring out some of those colour contrast that I've put in there. Well, this is all dry and the bricks are dry. And before I add my mirror to this, what I'm going to do is give it a coating of black paint. That will give my mirror finish a much better finish. And also what it will do is if I miss any bits, then the black will really help cover that up. I will give it two coats so it's a nice solid black because I've watered this down a little bit so I don't go up the edges of my fake wood. So the backing's dry now and what I'm going to do is put the mirror in. Now I'm using this mirror paint by Simon Semple. Thank you Vincent for sending me this. If you haven't checked out Vincent's podcast then check him out. I'll link him in the description below. He sent me this so thank you. And this is the mirrorous mirror paint there is. All I'm going to do is put it in there like this. If you can't get hold of mirror paint or you don't want to use mirror paint, then you could use aluminium foil, you could use some mirror card. There's lots of different things that you could use for this. So look how lovely and mirrory that is. <laughs> mirrory. I'm not sure that is a word, but it is now. And the book looks great from that side, but for some reason I got my measurements slightly wrong and this side doesn't close properly and I'm not very happy with that, but there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cut this book down and I'm going to leave it so it looks actually a little bit rougher than what I intended it to be. So I'm not bothered at all if it's looking a little bit rough. All I'm doing is I'm using the knife and the ruler to cut the pages down. 
Not ideal, but I don't want it looking like that. And I'm not going to make a new one and then say it come out perfect because that's not me, is it? Yeah, and that's work now. And what I'm going to do is kind of char those ends up of that book a little bit as well to make it look a little bit more raggedy. So that now works really well. There's enough gap all the way around. And actually, I love how that's come out. And none of those burns have stopped you being able to read that book. Well, I went over it once I'd finished burning it was with a soft brush just to get rid of any of the soot or dirt. And it kind of finished off colouring the rest of the ends of those pages as well, which I really like. So it just now looks a bit more damaged and it looks a little bit more fun, I think. Happy accident. So now it's time to paint the actual colour, the colour that I want it. And I'm not going to have it one colour. I'm going to do it a couple of different colours all over. These are the colours I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to do perhaps a bit of blue, some red and some yellow. And these will mix in and make different colours anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. And how I'm going to apply those is just with a normal sponge like this. So I've got that sort of pattern going all the way over. And now we'll let that dry. Well, I didn't like the stone that was inside the mirror. It just looked like a doorknob, to be honest, and it was too big. So what I did was, I've got some of these that I thought, oh, I know, I'll hit it with a hammer. And I did, and it came out perfect little size for it. But I don't want it to be sharp. It's not actually too sharp, but I don't want it to be sharp. So I'm going to cover that in some thin UV resin. And this is the low viscosity resin because I really only want to cover it so that it gets rounded edges and also so it's not really changing its shape too much. Quickly cure it up with my UV light and then that won't be sharp at all. That will be nice and smooth where that UV resin's gone on it, which is important. Well, that's cured up now and actually that UV resin has also given it a much nicer finish. It's got that shiny gloss finish to it again, like a stone should have. From where I broke it, it hadn't got that. And I think I'm going to put it about there, like that. This time, I'm going to use the UV resin to glue it down with. And it will just take a little splodge. There, like that, and then put the stone on that splodge, and then cure that up. And the other thing I'm going to change is, I didn't like the bricks when I put them on the sides of the book to have a look at, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that as well. There we go, so that's all nice and cured on there. You'd never know that was UV resin, and I think it's a better shape and a nicer look. And that's a great thing, you can change things as you go along. I'm always changing things. If you're not happy with something, don't just go ahead and feel that you've got to do it. Change it up. Always good to have a bit of change. The next job is to varnish this cover. I'm not going to put a gloss varnish on it. I'm using a satin varnish because I don't want it to be hyper gloss. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, I, I like the finish it gives and the paints I use are matte. And secondly, it will really protect the acrylic paint that I've used on this book cover. I'll give this two coats down both the spine and each of the front and back pages and then let that dry. Already you can see it's really bringing out, where I put that satin varnish, it really has brought out those colours already and brought that book to life. Be careful you don't stick your pages together when you're doing this as well. It is a good idea to put a sheet of paper in here to prevent that happening, but <laughs> never take my own advice. There we go, that will give that a really nice satin finish to that book cover. Well, it's time to put it together now, and it, then it will be finished. I put the bricks on like that, didn't really like them. So what I've done is I've cut out some corners on my Cricut, and I've also cut out some different corners for the bottom, because I didn't want those upside down over there. And I'm going to add those, and I've also made the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which can go in between them. I'll be gluing this on here using some white glue, and I'm going to paint it on right about a centimetre or so from the edge, so that if it pushes out, it's not going to spoil the final book. Although, to be honest, it does dry clear, so it shouldn't do that. I'm doing that by eye, as always. Pushing it down, holding it in place for a couple of minutes, and then I'll put a weight on that for about 10 minutes, and then that should have adhered there to that really well. Well, that's nearly dry now, but it's dry enough to be able to put on the rest of the bits. All I'm doing is adding the 
decals. I want to make sure I line these up because I know what I'm like for just putting stuff on and then it not being lined up. And then I'll do the same for the actual title of the book. And I've called it Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because that's what we call it in the UK. I know it's different in America, so you could change it. And this is such a simple project to do and would be a great one for your older kids to do in the holidays and things like that. Or for you to do. So I'm going to put the title on in exactly the same way as I did the corners. And then I will finish it off and show you what it looks like finished. Oh, that title's come out brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Big thank you to all the people that bought me a coffee last month. I really cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. I know times are difficult, but you do allow me to keep doing things like buying these books and then making these projects and the videos. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, the link for that is in the description below. And I really do appreciate it. And you'll get your name on my coffee board on both channels. Well, there we go. That's all finished now. I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I love the mirror. I love everything about it. It was so easy to do apart from messing up this bit. But actually, I really like how that has come out. It kind of gives it that more feeling of being a little bit more gothic. And also, it's custom. Not one letter in there was burnt, so that was really handy. I give it a good brush, as you know, to get rid of any dust and dirt, and that's gone completely. Let me know in the comments what you think. I really like it. I much prefer that stone as well. I will link everything that I've used in the description below. So if you're going to get hold of anything, you can. Take care. Enjoy your crafting. Bye.